Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great episode for you today. We're getting into the truth at the quarterback position. Lamar Jackson and company, which quarterbacks were most consistent, which weren't? Stay tuned. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. What? That was weird. I will. I won't make comments. Welcome into the show. Tuesday. Yeah, welcome. Tuesday, I, January twenty eighth. I couldn't hold it back. I don't know. I didn't feel like myself today. Well, you don't look like yourself. Not anymore. You're a sham. No, I know. Failure. I know. And uh, welcome into the show. We're recording the Tuesday, January 28th show. It's on Monday. And we've got the quarterback truth episode. And I know there are some fire stats that we're going to bring up on this episode. We're going to break down the truth of the fantasy quarterback position. This is always my favorite of the truth episodes in part because we get to talk about quarterback streaming and quarterback strategy and what we're doing uh, with the position heading into next year and, and kind of, I don't know, unearthing some of the, the truths about the position, but also like getting rid of some of the myths about mm. having to have a number one MVP type of quarterback. So we'll talk about that today on the show. We'll talk about quarterback truth on the Thursday show as well. Is that right, Brooks? Yes, sir. But we are – we're. <laughs> That'll be the majority of the show, but we are fresh off of yesterday. And so we won't stay here a long time, but I, what happened, Kobe Bryant, his daughter, the tragic accident in California, and, uh, you know, Mike and I, we, we got together, play some pickleball this morning with Al Borland. Yeah, that's right, pickleball. You heard me. Yeah. And uh, we were both saying just how kind of shell-shocked we were yesterday. Obviously, you know, I was trying to figure out kind of why it hit so hard you know, we, we're not, like, in L.A. We're not Laker fans. We grew up as Suns fans. So, and, you know. Kobe did terrible things to for us. For 20 years, right? But but I, I started to think about this, and I, I had a hard time all day yesterday, even going into going to sleep. And I'm like, I was 12 years old when Kobe Bryant was drafted. He retired when I was 32. I'm 35 now. So, and I've been an NBA fan my whole life. So, this was the superstar. This was the icon that was there for the pretty much duration of my like life. And it's just so jarring and so strange when somebody on that level is gone before their time, or so it seems. Yeah, yeah, it's rough. And, and when you factor in who was in the helicopter, the other kids, his daughter, their parents, it's, it's, it was so tragic. And we're all, we're all fathers. We're all fathers right. of three. We all have a daughter. My, like, the, the age that, you know, Kobe... And Gigi was, it, that's me and my daughter, Jersey, will be the identical age. So it's like the same gap. So, it's, it, yeah, it's emotional, man. This, you know, it, it, it sucks. It's a hard time. Uh, you know, sports are, sports are for entertainment, but you get invested in uh, the lives and the stories of the people well beyond sports. And, uh, you know, that's. You definitely have kind of a, I know it's one way for the fan, but it is a relationship with the player that you've had over time. And so it was It was definitely a jarring, sad day and continues to be, obviously, thoughts and prayers with his family, the family of all those involved. And so I, I don't know. I, I couldn't help but talk about it to start the show here a day later. Um, we do have the Super Bowl coming up this week. By the way, thanks to everybody supporting the podcast, Apple Podcasts, subscribing, reviewing. Um, you can obviously listen on Spotify, ad-free on Stitcher Premium, and the website's thefantasyfootballers.com. But we got a, we have a Super Bowl. I was in the mall yesterday. I'm walking through these sports stores, and they just got it all laid out. All the Chiefs gear, all the Garoppolo gear, uh, all the Mahomes gear. Wait, wait. It's all the Kansas City gear and all the Garoppolo gear? Well, this, like there's 49er no... gear. Okay. I, almost bought, I thought about getting a Super Bowl shirt. I thought about shooting my shot for this back wall of oh. our studio. Like, we always replace this helmet. Just putting Kansas City With up? the defending champ. 
But Andy would have put the 49ers up. Based on my bracket, yes. How dare Based you? on my heart, no. How dare you? Here's, no, I would have bought the Chiefs. Thank you. Because I'm a Cardinal fan, so I can't root for you 49ers. Here's what I know about everybody going into the Super Bowl. You have 49ers fans and everybody else. Like, if mm. you're... You know what I mean? Like, like everybody's rooting for Kansas City. This is really one of those, like, do you want high-scoring, fun, analytics-driven awesomeness, or do you want old-school, run-the-ball, play-good no. defense? Oh, heck no yeah. way. I, That's see, how it feels. I, and I'm excited about that narrative. I like it. I like the – I think you're right. I think you're right that it's 49ers fans versus the world. Who is Joe Montana but I don't, I don't. For? I don't think you're right with the Kyle Shanahan offense. That dude is uh, – I mean, he, he was just – in the Super Bowl, I mean, uh, they have odds on him whether he'd blow another twenty-eight to three lead. There are Vegas odds oh, on whether he'd blow another twenty-eight to three lead. I'm gonna say not good. Yeah. I'm gonna say he won't do that. But I mean, that, that's impressive. He was just there as the I, offensive coordinator. So I and you know, I'm not I'm not saying that the 49ers aren't well coached or analytics driven. I'm saying like the the Twitter crowd of the perception of analytics. It's like you got to pass the ball in today's NFL, and this is like. Do you? Let's find out. Jimmy Garoppolo, six completions in the conference championship game. That's not going to win in the Super Bowl. Not against Mahomes. No. All right. One of the big highlights I want to bring up here before we kick things off is Super Bowl Sunday means two things. One, incredible game we get to watch. Number two, that's when the pre-order of the 2020 Ultimate oh, Draft Kit. Yeah, yeah. Let's kick off the 2020 season. <laughs> Mike will only use that voice for these promos. <laughs> I promise you, or there will be... Wait, what's wrong with a, that voice? No, I, it, it's small doses is all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, lowest possible price on the Ultimate Draft Kit this Sunday. Um, if you pre Super low! <laughs> if you pre-order before March 1st, so when it goes on sale, pre-order on Sunday through March 1st, you get the lowest possible price. You get $5 gift card towards, uh, to shopballers.com. You get $10 at fantasychamps.com, you get Ooh. early access to Dynasty and Rookie Rankings, oh. and you get entered with a chance to win the Ultimate Fantasy Footballers Prize Pack, which includes a mm. listener league spot. It's the first one of 2020. If yeah. you want that first spot after Captain Sink, he did win. Yes. So he's back So he gets the that. second spot. Yeah. Well, the first new spot. Yeah, there so you if, if you win that prize pack, you get the listener league spot. You get a um, an invitation to come you on You could a, win the listener league spot. You don't just get one. You can win it. Thank you. Yes. You you are entered for a chance to win the prize pack on top of those other perks. So anyway, ultimatedraftkid.com, Super Bowl Sunday. You'll be able to check that out. Um, that's our baby. The UDK is mm. our baby. Mm. We spent... Uh, we've had a lot of babies. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been doing this a little while, Mike. <laughs> One baby, though. It just keeps getting it's reborn. It's growing yeah, older. It's, get, it's getting older. Yeah. It's more of a... what? It, what it's not a toddler anymore. It's in oh, kindergarten. It's, it's, it's in kindergarten. Uh, I was going to say, is it a tweener? Uh, <laughs> Jason, you had an interesting Super Bowl stat you wanted to share. Yeah, since we're talking about the, the Super Bowl, the defense and running versus the awesome offense of Pat Mahomes of the Chiefs. So James Palmer on Twitter tweeted this out. So in the last 15 seasons, there have been seven teams that have reached the Super Bowl that had 55 or more oh! sacks. And Sacks. you got the 2005 Steelers, the 2007 Giants, the 2008 Steelers, the 2010 Packers, 11 Giants, 2015 Broncos, all won the Super Bowl. And you have the 2019 49ers. As so far, it's right. 100%. And so facto. Have you looked back beyond the 15 years? Is mm that... Nope. No, you have. <laughs> so I wonder if this is hey, is probably it, very selective. But it's at least a streak, a streak of yeah. the last six teams that have had fifty-five or more sacks, winning the Super Bowl. The Forty Niners. Uh, look, I think the game's going to be great. I think it's going to be a close game. Both of these teams. Um, I, I'm just excited to watch the game. I promise it will be so much better than last year. Mm. That's a that I that's a guarantee from me to you. Unless you're a specific fan of one of these two and teams. And you know you can find him at Jason FFL on Twitter if it goes wrong. That's right. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction.
All right, we've got three buy or sell questions we're going to run through real quick. Super Bowl edition, presented by Pristine Auction. Patrick Mahomes, 300 passing yards in the Super Bowl. Buy or sell? So his last two playoff games, 294 and 321, the 49ers defense only gave up more than 275 passing yards three times during the season. He held, They held uh, opponent, opposing quarterbacks under 200 passing yards nine times. Impressive. So 300 passing yards for Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. I'm going to sell it. I think he wins by being clutch Mahomes, not necessarily by being uh, overwhelm you Mahomes passing yards wise. I'm going to take the I'm under. buying. I'm buying. I will buy Patrick Mahomes. Uh, there is a reason that one person in the world calls him Showtime. That person calls him called him Showtime over and over and over. Are you using Booger in your argument? Is that <laughs> what you're doing? I am. Okay. Look, I, I think Mahomes is going to light up the Super Bowl. I think he's going to be great. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, but he lit up Tennessee, didn't get to 300 yards. This is a really oh, dude, tough yeah, 294. line. 294. So, look, I get it. It's an actual under, but that seems more in the favor of 300 yards. It is a really good line, but I'm going to I'm gonna buy. I'm going to say he, he reaches 300 passing yards even against the great 49ers. He's made for this stage. This is funny now. We're going Jimmy Garoppolo, 200 passing yards. <laughs> you can do it, Jimmy. Past two games, he uh, combined for 208 passing yards on 27 <laughs> attempts. He had 131 yards against Minnesota, 77 against Green Bay. Do I believe that he will pass 200? I will buy it. I believe it will be necessary for them to stay competitive in this game. I will buy Ooh. 201. That's so about where I have him. You're buying Jimmy somewhat close then to Mahomes. Um, I mean, I guess it's a 100-yard gap, but it's like when you're saying you sell Mahomes at 300 yeah. in your head, what do you project? The, Look, the like reason – 250? Sure, 250, 270, whatever, under 300. All right. But the thing is, is the reason I love San Francisco to start this entire playoffs run is because they are a machine-like team with a great defense. I think Jimmy G is going to need to do more – than 131 against Minnesota or 77 versus Green Bay when facing Patrick Mahomes. So I'll take it. But can he against Kansas City? Like I think he can. What we don't talk about is San Francisco's defense is highlighted. Kansas City's defense turned, Stepping up. They turned into an absolute juggernaut over the second half of the season. So I believe that Jimmy Garoppolo can and will do it this week. Uh, you know, in those games where he was forced to throw the ball more, he was able to go back to that uh, New Orleans Saints game, right. a great defense. He was great because they needed him to do it. This 208 combined passing yards, that's what they hope they'll be able to do, you know, have another give have a good 88 yards this game. That's what the Niners want Garoppolo to have. That he's going to have to do more. I think he's going to be able to do it. All right, George Kittle, last one here. Does Mike get to weigh <laughs> no, in? No, apparently not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was so excited about this next question. Mike, are you buying or selling? I will buy. That's like I, I want to. Wow. We stopped. Really the glad show we came, waited for that. We came back to you and set you strong up. arguments. We put it on the T. Mm -hmm. I'm a buy. Yep. You, I it's feel like regrettable. he spent like five minutes trying to talk me out of my buy, and then he bought. Yeah. No. No. I want to sell for the game, but I will buy because I think Mahomes is going to be awesome. It's funny, and they're Bef going to be forced before to. the show. I told I told Brooks I think this line is too high, and that yeah we all bought it. So you were wrong. I was I was wrong on that. Yes, I don't buy sell one. last one. George Kittle will will lead the 49ers in receiving yards. So I don't really like this buy sell question because it's like George Kittle or the field. Right, Debo. Three out of the last five games, Debo's actually led the team in receiving yardage. To me, this is an easy buy. Yes, and the it's reason an easy buy for me too. the reason that I think it's an easy buy is because. The, the 49ers have been unbelievable at shutting down wide receivers. The way their defense lines up, they were the second best in the Kansas league. Kansas City? Yes, K Kansas City has been uh, the, the second best team in the league as far as fantasy points given up to wide receiver position, and they're not that great against tight ends. So I think this is a really beneficial matchup for the 49ers against Kansas City Chiefs. I think Kittle will definitely lead. In I will take the field. Whether it's a running back, whether it's Sanders or Debo stepping up, I'm going to take the field. I'm going to sell George Kittle leading the team uh, in receiving yards. That's buy or sell from Pristine Auction. A reminder, if you want to check out some sweet signed sports memorabilia, 
Head over to pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS to get a $10 credit on your first purchase, pristineauction.com. News and notes from around the league. Eli Manning has announced his retirement from the National Football League after 16 seasons reactions. Oh, man. The the most fun thing on Twitter is the Eli Manning, should he be a Hall of Fame, uh, you know, that debate. Right. Oh, man. That's, that's fun? That's well, fun? I it's, saw Jason. He, Jason was getting into it. Well, so here's the thing. Someone posted, you know, should he get in? I just had a one-word answer that was like, nope, but – Man, some people out there, they responded to me like I was the devil. I was the I mean, these Giants fans or these Eli Manning fans, they they're passionate about their Eli. I am neither a Giants fan nor was I ever a, a huge Eli Manning fan, but I don't know how you keep him out of the Hall of Fame. No, he'll get in. Okay. I'm so I do not believe he should be in. I definitely think he will get in because of the super, two Super Bowls. But he was, through his career, the 100% definition of an average NFL quarterback. That's just the truth. He was an average. Maybe. Maybe you could say he's above average. So he was, he was top I'll, 10. I'm going to put him above average. He was a t would you say maybe he's about like a top 10 quarterback oh, yeah. through most of his career? Mostly right around when you the 10-ish area, though. That is not a Hall of Fame. When, when, I think part of the, the argument is uh, some of the intangible factors, durability. Like this, he had yes. you know this this kind of Brett he Farvian has the streak, right? streak, yeah. And then you have the Super Bowls and the Super Bowl runs, and you know what defines a Hall of Famer is it statistical output only? Because over the next fifteen years, I promise you, these quarterbacks, they're the all statistical be output is going to be better than these guys in the past. It will, but would they be able to keep playing as long as Eli played? And he, I lean yes. He, I I'm I'm leaning on the yes side. And the, he he got hosed, man. It was uh, the couple years back when he got benched the one game so they could bring in Geno Smith, even though the team was going nowhere. Oh, for the streak. Yeah, destroying the streak, which he would have kept going for a whole other season. It, it, I think Eli Manning's a Hall of Fame. That would have been the buy or sell right there. Yeah. He's in. Ooh. Buy it. Well, I'll buy that he's in. I'll buy it that he but deserves I, if to I be was, in. If I was a voting member, I would definitely not vote for him. All right, impending free agent Drew Brees says he'll take a month or so before making a decision on his future. It sounds like the Larry Fitzgerald treatment. Should Drew Brees be in the Hall of Fame, Jason? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say yes, for sure. Because Even though fewer Super Bowl titles than yeah. uh, uh -huh. Eli Manning. Should wow. Dan Marino not be in the Hall of Fame then? No, uh, he's a big loser. <laughs> I think we all expect Drew Brees back. Yes, I Yeah, do. for at least one more. But one more year, maybe. Yeah. Chargers have, quote, moved on from Phillip Rivers, per Jay Glazer. He'll be a free agent this offseason. He's moved his family from San Diego to Florida. Jason, thoughts? I Hall of am, Famer? Uh, no. I'm going to say that uh, I, I am proud of uh, my Chargers. And uh, my I, is that I, your new team? I mean, I'm just so proud of the decisions that they're making right now. And I would encourage the NFL to um, look at what the Chargers just did. And um, more I, Pro Bowls, I want, more Pro Bowls for Phillip Rivers than Eli Manning. Better yeah, quarterback he's better. record. He's a better quarterback. Similar than Eli passing Manning. yards. Like Philip Rivers. Better touchdown to interception ratio. Phillip Rivers was a better quarterback than Eli Manning he just he didn't get the Super Bowls but I believe he was better uh so let's just leave them both and, out. The, and the, that yes I agree because they were both really 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 good quarterbacks for not a long hall period of, of time but not hall of fame all stars if there all was a stars, hall, for hall sure. of all stars hall of all stars <laughs> that's a bad name so um yeah I mean look Philip Rivers maybe he can uh, sign with a team like the Buccaneers and have a good fantasy season going forward it really depends on where he goes if he were to go to a place like the Bears, and they're not going to. He, I don't. I don't think you'd be looking. You looking for him for fantasy purposes. I want to get him in the booth. I, I, I think he <laughs> you just want to get him off the field. Super entertaining, and I just don't want to have him on my fantasy roster ever again, or be forced into a situation where I would do that. I hope he haunts you in some fashion. NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reporting: the Vikings assistant head coach, offensive advisor Gary Kubiak, is now taking over as offensive coordinator. Coobs. Coobs <laughs> yeah, is back. He's back. 
I mean, he was already there, yeah. but now that he's the offensive coordinator, not like we weren't already hot and bothered by Dalvin Cook, but goodness gracious, this this is great news for Dalvin Cook. Nobody, uh, you got the Shanahan's and Kubiak, yep, who came from the same area. W- when those guys are involved in the running game, you you accept all pieces of the running game. All right, Green Bay, uh, Green Bay Press Gazette expecting the Packers to release Jimmy Graham. I thought they had already kind of. I yeah, thought Jimmy had already released himself. I yeah, mean, it's, that, it's over. A couple years too late, but it's okay. You got there, Green Bay. All right, and then uh, this is. There's been some they news. They gave him so much money. Yeah. <laughs> back when they did this. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you know we get mad at teams for not like equipping their quarterbacks, and sometimes they try to do it the wrong way. All right, um, Kareem Hunt news. Uh, Pulled over, cited for a traffic violation. Uh, the last report I read yep. had him at least admitting at the time that he would not have passed an NFL drug test. That is correct. We know about Kareem Hunt's history. I, You know, you just can't be optimistic with his, his future in the league at this point. What will it represent and what – you know, it, 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 is he going to stay in the NFL? Probably. But does a yes. team take a shot at him being a, you know, backbone type of player? You can't do that with Kareem Hunt. You He's, can't make him a foundational back yeah, th- on the heels of two incidents. It really puts a damper on the possibility that's, that a team will come in with a big contract. I, I completely agree with you, Andy. Like, Might increase his chances of staying in I Cleveland. I think it does. I, I think it, it increases the fact that he'll be back with Cleveland – he, if the NFL came and and gave him said test, I don't think that Kareem Hunt has any failures on his record, as far as I know. So that would, I mean, that's a completely different situation. I don't know if the NFL uh, compounds that by his uh, off the field issue or not. So I think he would still be okay, but it just it it sucks. It's man. a judge. Hunt, it's a judgment it, situation. Yes, it yeah. is, and as a restricted free agent. The, the the tag that they'll put on him can be cheaper now, and I doubt someone, you know, buys him out. So, yeah, he, I, I agree with you, too. He'll probably be back as a Brown now. Before we move into the truth about quarterbacks, I want to thank today's sponsor. Bank United wants you to go for more. Enter for a chance to win $54,000 if a team goes for it and completes a two-point conversion during the big game on February 2nd. All you have to do is... Follow at Bank United on Twitter and tweet at Bank United your answer to what you would do with fifty-four thousand dollars using the hashtag Go for More Fifty Four. Jason, what would you do with fifty-four thousand oh, dollars? That's a lot of apple pies. I would buy so many Hostess apple pies. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a chance to win. The more tweets you send, the more chances you have of winning. And if a team completes a two-point conversion, you could win again. Follow Bank United on Twitter and tweet at Bank United your answer to what would you do with $54,000. You must be at least 18 years of age to enter. For official rules, visit www.goformore54.com. That's go for more and the number 54.com. Bank United NA member FDIC. Neither Twitter nor the NFL entities have offered, administered, endorsed, or sponsored the sweepstakes in any way. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Here's the truth. We're not sponsored by Hostess in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> but Jason would love to be, and has, I think you've, have you approached their headquarters in, to beg for that? Uh, I have not thought of doing that yet, but I should. I mean, we, you know, we're a team. We do things together, but... I would wear a hostess shirt every single day for a year <laughs> if it came with some kind of supply right. of these. That hostess would be apple not pies. good. This is not good for your goals, man. Do we need a Clementine report? Was that on this show? Clementine report is uh, there's Clementine no, report. <laughs> there's there's no Clementine. Uh, they did not find a Clementine inside <laughs> they, of me. They did not find an orange inside of your chest. No, they did not. Um, so nothing has changed. Okay, uh, but that's good. Yeah, all right. So bring the apple pies. So bring on the apple pies. (laughs) So excited about this. Let's break it down. Quarterbacks in 2019. My favorite stat to look at. Mike brings it up each and every year. Yeah, Mike, you take this one. There were 40 different top 12 quarterbacks on the season. We did it. What? (laughs) 
<laughs> but guys, there's only 32 teams in the NFL. That's right. There are only 32 teams in the NFL. I feel like I'm having a conversation with myself. I feel like you're Mickey Mouse. I don't know what that was. Uh, but this, that's the, this is what happens. 2015, 40 quarterbacks. 2016, 40 quarterbacks. 2017, 43 quarterbacks. 2018, 41, and 40 again this year. Because backup quarterbacks come into the NFL, it's very friendly for them to be putting up all kinds of yardage, all kinds of fantasy numbers, and if they're in a good matchup, backup quarterbacks produce. This is why we talk about you can find production. You can replace your quarterback any given week. Guys this is like A.J. McCarron and had a Matt top 12 Schaub, week. Matt Moore, Jeff Driscoll. Wait, Matt Schaub had one? This year. No. Yeah, remember when uh, uh, it was was I think Matt Ryan was benched in that game. And uh, he came in happened? and, and uh, had a, a What decent a world end. we live in. Yeah, I mean, you're not recommending A.J. McCarron, Matt Schaub, no. Matt Moore, and Jeff Driscoll, but highlighting the point that on any given week, based on matchups, you know, there were there were weeks where Jeff Driscoll was started. Driscoll. And so you, you were able to kind of look at, you know, the modern NFL, what takes place, and we just kind of get back to that same point that, you know, you can find value at quarterback. Yep. Later in the draft, look, you're not you're not shooting for the week to week decision. At least I'm not. When I'm looking at the quarterback position, I'm not saying, man, there's some. What I want to do this next year is each and every week be, you know, choosing a streaming quarterback. But it shows you that you can find value later in the draft. You can pivot if you need to. In 2019, quarterback scoring um, compared to 2018, they threw for 43 fewer passing touchdowns year hmm. over year, hmm. 13 fewer interceptions despite Jameis's best efforts, <laughs> and 216 fewer fantasy points. Hmm. Uh, Matt Schaub update. Um, as I know, uh, Matt right. Ryan was not benched. He was injured, but this was not the game he was injured. Uh, this was a game where Matt Schaub came in and threw for 460 yards against Seattle. Wow. How do I have, I have like a gray spot in my memory. I do not remember this That's, happening. I, I, I didn't remember it either. That's no, not, this is impossible. Yeah. The Schaub cloud. You, yes. you weren't paying attention. I refuse. Um, another stat from this past year before we break down the players. In 2018, we had 20 different quarterbacks who completed better than 65% of their passes. That's an NFL record. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, that's a lot of quarterbacks throwing for 65% or more. Well, I think there was questions last year. Is this a trend? Is this the new type of short passing game on timing routes with the new defensive rules that we're going to see more of that? But it went down this year to 13. And then this should have been kind of in that argument about streaming quarterbacks, but nine of the first 10 quarterbacks selected in the 2019 fantasy drafts finished lower than where they were drafted. That is, I mean, that right there, like we talk about, okay, there's 40 quarterbacks that finish top 12, but you're not going to play Matt Schaub. But what you are going to do is draft quarterback. And of the top 10 quarterbacks that were drafted, all of them, ex you know, except for Lamar, finished behind where they were drafted. So that that speaks volumes it just, to the late quarterback is where the value within the position lies. Yeah, it's kind of a it's a whole positional problem. They're just valued too high. If if nine out of ten finish below where they were drafted, they're just valued too high as a position as a whole. Whatever psychology goes into that, you know, they're the most important position in football when you watch the game. They're the MVP year over year, and you even they score the most fantasy they score the points. Most fantasy points, and when you draft your team. That completionism, okay, I'm going to take this position, then that position, then this position, then that position, gets into it as well. Having a shiny quarterback for your roster, it really makes you feel good. Yeah, you 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 can go undefeated preseason with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when, when you spent the pick on Patrick Mahomes coming into this year, it didn't matter what the rest of your team looked like. like yeah, but you see Patrick Mahomes starting for this team. Yeah, yeah but oftentimes it's... Aaron Rodgers, who right. you feel great about, and then Oof. he, he Russell? terrible. <laughs> Wilson. All right, we'll get All right. There. breaking down the truth, starting with Lamar Jackson. A reminder, great games at the quarterback position. We're calling great games 25 or more points. Good games, more than 17. Bus games, fewer than 15 points. This Lamar is four point per passing touchdown scoring? 
That's right. And then Lamar Jackson, number one at the position, number one in consistency. Uh, he busted one time. He was good, 93%, great, 60%. We don't have to stay on Lamar Jackson for a long time other than to say, I mean, what a season, over 3,100 yards, 36 touchdowns, another 1,200 on the ground, seven rushing touchdowns. So what is there to add about he, Lamar he, Jackson on the he year? He was awesome. We know the truth. Yeah, the, the truth is he was absolutely sensational. The true competitive advantage for your team, though, aside from him being the the outlier, the, the top alpha quarterback of the year, you took him very late. You took him, or maybe not very late, but you took him late in drafts compared to where other people were grabbing their quarterback, and that made the difference On average, he was team. the quarterback 12. So in a normal 12 quarterback league, he was the last starting right. quarterback taken, and he was he was the best. He's just phenomenal. He tied Peyton Manning and uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes with the most quarterback one weeks. He had 14 weeks Jeez, where he man. finishes quarterback one. And keep in mind, he didn't play week 17. Right. I mean, and that was last year for Mahomes. Yes. So that means two of those record-setting years are back-to-back -back now. Yep. And they both provided that, you know, I mean, it's just really impressive for both of those guys. Great year for Lamar. We know the truth. If you had him, you were probably a champion or you ended up near it, and he was a difference maker. Now, number two, at the position, rather quietly, it seemed. Yes. Dak Prescott. Consistency rank came in at number three. 81% of the time gave you a good game. That is what made Dak Special, 31% great. Surprising? Yeah, I mean, it, it. it is a little bit surprising because he had some down games where at, at the end of the game, the garbage time that was, you know, infuriating got him back to good performances. So more often than not, he was really solid for fantasy. But I think if we pause the show after quarterback one and said, okay, everybody in your car, say who was quarterback two, I don't know how many people would have said, oh, yeah, Dak, Dak Prescott on the on the season was this was the second you know highest scoring fantasy quarterback. Yeah, he had a bad fantasy playoffs, which sticks with you. I mean, in weeks fifteen and sixteen, he was sixteenth and twenty third on the week, but he was another value pick for your team. I mean, he was the quarterback seventeen in average draft position. He ends up with thirty touchdowns, another three on the ground, almost five thousand yards passing. And, uh, you know, Jerry says number one priority is getting him back on uh, the field with the new contract. I think we all expect that to happen. Uh, he did struggle against top 16 defenses. You know, he was uh, minus 9.82 fantasy yeah. points against them. And he also much better at home. Not that I'm holding that against him, but just it, you should pay attention to the fact of, of how much better he was, Nine points better at home you you add in the 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 home the home court advantage for him home field advantage and the way that he dominated bottom half defenses I mean it, it looks very similar to a wide receiver uh, who plays for the Cowboys who was his wide receiver one so it, if hopefully Dak Prescott does not go the way that Amari Cooper goes for fantasy hopefully he can get a little bit more balanced out there with uh, with Michael Gallup moving forward and doesn't just have to only rely on Cooper. All of his bad games were on the road, really. I mean, right. they, at New Orleans, at the Jets, that was a surprise game. At New England, okay, we expected. At Chicago, okay. Um, Philly. And, but at Philly, that was the one that killed you in yeah, Week 16 against that secondary. You thought you'd get bigger things from, from Dak. But coming in at number three on consistency, this was just a great year from Dak. Do you think – does Dak finally get fantasy respect? Nope. You don't think so, Jay? I, I don't. I don't think he'll get enough fantasy respect. He should. He's literally never once in his career not finished as a top twelve quarterback. But I think he'll be another late round guy next year because he's not flashy. There's changes in the you know the whole coaching uh, sphere for the Cowboys, and and that could be good because Kellen Moore is still there as the offensive coordinator. Now you're bringing in a head coach who kind of has a history of throwing the ball. A little too much is is kind of how they felt in Green Bay. Um, so yeah, I you know I I think Dak will probably be a good value, especially because what Andy pointed out, the fantasy playoffs were three of Dak's worst weeks of the season. So he didn't help anyone win a championship. No one's riding high on Dak. But if you look at the first eleven weeks of the season, you know 
it's not a coincidence that he played good when Amari Cooper played good. And when we talked about the truth of Amari Cooper. Superman plays good. <laughs> he played well when Amari Cooper played well. Uh, it, you know, it, it's not. We talked about it on the truth of the wide receivers episode that I think Andy and I are in the boat that believe he that he being Amari Cooper was just really injured and not as effective himself. And that should have an effect on Dak. So if maybe Cooper starts off and continues to be healthy next year. I think Dak's a great fantasy option next year. I think there are a lot of names we've yet to say that will get drafted ahead of Dak. So I think That's to fair. Jason's point, QB seventeen off the board, no. He won't he won't be that again. Not if they bring back his weapons. But you know, we'll see. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Listen, guys. Number three. Fantasy finish. Oh, Russ. Yeah. Oh, you're so special. I won that bet, Mike, because you said he wasn't good. I said he was going to be top 12. We had a bet. I won. He's number three. Consistency rank mm. of Russell Wilson, 13. You wish you bet on consistency rank, Mike, because you won that <laughs> argument, but I won the bet. He was very not consistent. Oh. I mean, 44% of the time you got a good game from Russell. 31% bust rate. There was a period of time from week seven through 14 where you were happy one time. Ugh. The fact that that can happen, the fact that the truth about Russell Wilson, the truth is the number three finish is a lie. That's the truth. Yes. It's a lie for your team. If you can go seven weeks or six games and you can get one game you're happy with from your quarterback, that means finishing at three doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't. No, it, it should not factor into how you draft Russell. No, you're right. One one thing we were looking at when we were looking at all the different splits and uh, this and that, you know, Will Disley. Um, yes. He was a – whoa. Yeah, I was hoping I got it. Big Montana. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Will Disley – We miss you, Will. – was phenomenal yeah. to start the year. Um, he, he was – you know, he was – the consistency ring. I, I was working on the tight end consistency metrics today – and, you know, if, if you take out his injured game, he would have been the number one most consistent tight end because he was just unbelievable. And that was that coincided with Russ being unbelievable. Russell the, Wilson was 10 fantasy points better per game when Will Disley was active. Yeah, so, you know, whether Will Disley is able to get over his second horrific injury in back-to-back -back years is yet to be seen. But the expectation is he'll have Will Disley next year, which is good for Russell Wilson. But... Mike's argument in preseason of this being a team that wants to run the ball and how much you can rely on enough passing volume to be the week-in and week-out quarterback is a legit concern because, sure, Russ can always put up monster games, but can you rely on him to be plug-and-play? Because if you draft a guy like Russ, you're playing him every single week and you're yeah. going to get the bad ones with the good ones at 31% bust rate. That's too high. No, and, and we make, you know, Mike brings up Amari Cooper and Dak's correlation on their inconsistency at times. But Russell and Tyler Lockett, it's the same story there. Sure. And we talked about that a lot before the year where it's like, hey, I want to buy into Tyler Lockett, but reliability, consistency, that's a question. So, um, you know, what, Russ what, is a great quarterback. Nobody doubts yes. that Russ is one of the best quarterbacks in football. What's wild about it, his his splits against top and bottom half defenses, he's over eight points better per game against the top passing defenses. I uh, honestly, like, you can build theories of, is this because they're playing a good defense and the they run... Put, they put more on him. Well, I'm and, just saying, the run game doesn't work. And because it's just an overall better defense, and so they have to turn to Russell more. I'm or not an overall a, better team that can score on them, and he's got to sure. play catch up. I posted. I had a, a Twitter day dedicated to Patrick Mahomes on Saturday. Posted five or six stats, and it was incredible how Russ was just right there with. It was like they were on a different tier of quality at the position. You know, over the last two years, Patrick Mahomes has thrown a touchdown every fourteen point five pass attempts. Russ is one for every 15. So I was like, if he just got to throw more, he would put up those kind of numbers. He's number two over the last two years in total touchdowns. So he, he's just always right there in terms of not turning the ball over. They just don't ask him to do as much as Kansas City asks Patrick Mahomes to do. But if they did, he could do it. So the truth going into 2020, Andy, 
are you going to look for Russell Wilson as a guy you want to be your starter, your quarterback one, because he obviously is a phenomenal real-world quarterback, puts up fantasy points, or are you worried because of the passing volume on the consistency and you'd rather not invest it's impossible for me to try to value that question outside of considering what I have to pay for Russell Wilson. So I'd rather have Dak than I would Russell Wilson based on history and game plan. And knowing that my choice of Russell Wilson is a commitment to him as my guy, and then I'm going to have to absorb all of that, mm -hmm. the ping pong ball. Like playing him on a week-to-week -week basis, I'm not going to complain, but I would feel like I don't have the ability to pivot off of him. And what you would be absorbing – just as a as an example for people from week seven, which is pretty early through the rest of the season, if you played Russell Wilson, he had fewer fantasy points during that stretch than Jimmy Garoppolo and oh. Derek Carr. Oh, so I made the right oh. call. There. Yeah, don't ever say that again. <laughs> it was a one time only <laughs> situation. Scrub that from the internet. <laughs> That's gross. All right, number four, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson finished at number four at the position. Consistency rank was number seven. All right, 60% good games, 47% great. So you got a lot of great out of Deshaun you Watson. Inclu I mean, week one, he was a third overall. Week three, fifth overall. Back-to-back -back week one weeks, weeks five and six. I got another number two and number one finish. So that's – I'm kind of – I really like this season for Deshaun Watson. It's really unfortunate he had those the two games towards the end of the year, and especially championship week against Tampa Bay. When, <laughs> if you remember, that was the game where Jameis was was pleading. He was pleading with the Houston Texans to score a lot of points because he just kept giving them the ball, but they weren't able to get anything done. So let me ask you guys this, because you know we're looking at the quarterback position as a whole. We talked about nine of ten finishing below where they were drafted. Are you so Deshaun Watson finished at four, had weak winning weeks. He was drafted forty three overall last year. He was the quarterback two off the board behind Mahomes. Are you happy? No, I, I don't think you're, you're not happy. happy. I don't I don't think you're happy. At forty three overall, you're giving up a really good running back or wide receiver piece, and you still, even though you got the weak winning performances, you, you know twenty seven percent bust rate is not that much better than the aforementioned Russell Wilson. He had several games that really hurt you. If you look at the first seven weeks of the season, three of those first seven weeks were he wasn't a top fifteen quarterback. Now the thing that evens he probably him won out, you the other four weeks. I was gonna say the thing that evens him out is how high his ceiling is, and I still like Deshaun Watson. I think he will fall a little bit next year in the draft. Not not drastically at all, but be a slightly better value now that other guys are coming up like Lamar Jackson, who will obviously probably be the number He'll one. He'll be the number one guy. So, you know, maybe Deshaun Watson falls to the quarterback three, but if he can get a little bit lower, I, I still like his upside. I feel like he's got to be the closest that we get on high draft capital quarterbacks to being content with the pick. When you, yeah, when you were can, drafted at QB2, yeah. you spend the 43rd pick, you're not paying up for Mahomes, and you still get a QB four finish. I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that's as close as you're gonna you're gonna get to being okay. Yeah, I mean, I I guess when I say I don't think you're going to look back and say I regret this pick. People that picked Deshaun Watson were were happy with him. I just still don't think it was a actually good. Yeah, pick you don't you for, don't spend the number two pick for the seventh most consistent guy. Exactly, and he he's got to be th QB three off of ADP next year, right? Yeah, probably. Behind only Lamar and Mahomes. I guess I yeah. I wonder about Russ, but okay. he'll probably go ahead of Russell Wilson. Who's that? Russell. Russell. Mm -hmm. Russell. Mm -hmm. All right, coming in at, uh, where are we at? Number five? Oh, yeah. goodness. Oh, oh goodness yes. gracious. Yes. Jameis Winston. <laughs> Jameis Winston was number five overall. Consistency rank of 14. <laughs> This is why Bruce Arians might feel tempted to move on. 626 pass attempts, 5,100 yards. Well, of course, 626 attempts, 33 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. It's rare when I have to make sure I know which one's which in the show, Doc, because the numbers are like that. I, You know what's interesting? I was studying up on Winston. So this year, 
This was the twelfth time in history, in NFL history, that a quarterback has passed five thousand passing yards in a single season. That was Jameis this year. This was also the twelfth time in history that a quarterback has thrown thirty or more interceptions. <laughs> that was also Jameis. Yeah, I mean, this was a a player that you could you could always rely on the fact that he was going to get the opportunity to throw the football, which is something that we projected well before the season. When you have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, O.J. Howard, and Bruce Arians. Now, Mike brought up, we were talking at lunch today. He's like, okay, just just remember, first year Carson yeah. Palmer in the in the system with Arians, I think it was 18 interceptions. You know, it was a rough year for Carson Palmer in Arizona. But Palmer was not a guy known for slinging it irresponsibly around the field. It was 22. 22. So, uh, yeah, that's a. I mean, that was it a bad year. It wasn't too bad. Uh, it was, I mean, what do you have? Probably about twenty-five touchdowns, though. I mean, uh, what, what yeah, was twenty-four that? touchdowns. Yeah. But I'm saying the, the years before that, fourteen, sixteen, twenty. So I mean, Palmer was he fumbled twelve times. Winston did. Yes, he, five lost. Honestly, I think the fumbles are as as big of a deal as the thirty interceptions. You can't I, throw I, thirty interceptions, but the fumbles were just ridiculous. I saw your mind. You, you wanted to say we're yeah. a bigger deal, and then you realized he threw yeah, 30, 30 horrific <laughs> interceptions. I mean, so many of his interceptions were, what are yeah. you doing? By the way, we didn't bring it up because we were moving past Lamar, but if you remember coming into the year, Lamar had seven fumbles, I think, lost In on seven, seven games. games. Yeah. He only fumbled twice this year. Two fumbles lost. Fixed it. Yeah. It, that, that is one thing that can 100% be fixed. Fumbles lost is usually not a very sticky stat. There are a few players, Kirk Cousins, who, uh, you know, or Kurt Warner. If, you, if you're Kirk, a quarterback that starts Kurt, with the letter K, you're going to fumble everywhere. Kurt Peterson? No, yeah. no, that was Adrian. I'm sorry. And, and, and Andy, then, to, I was curious about passing attempts. We're like, wait, 626 attempts. Of course, he hit 5,000, but Jared Goff also had 626 attempts. Matt Ryan had 616. Tom Brady had 613. So, like, to me, if I'm Tampa Bay, I'm bringing Jameis back. I'm going to franchise him. I am not going to give him a, a long-term contract yet I it, because 5,000 yards doesn't just happen. It's a, it's a pretty big deal. But yeah. 30 freaking interceptions, man, that's, <laughs> that is, that's hard to do. Yeah, I mean, he's got great weapons. Uh, speaking both of Winston and Arians in Tampa Bay, we know the average depth of target, the way he drives the ball downfield, lends itself to big fantasy output. So if he's back in Tampa, there's really no reason you should, you know, be too blinded by the turnovers because he could provide you an opportunity, I mean, late in the draft. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jameis is a guy for fantasy purposes I'm always going to be interested in. He's not the most consistent guy. And, and when he bombs, he can – I mean, he can – he can go out there in his first four passes or interceptions he's right. benched. He can ruin a week for sure. He's not the most consistent, but the truth about Jameis is that he is a guy that you can often find on waivers that can go out and put up a top five performance. Week 12, top five. Week 14, top five. Week 15, top five. Week four, top five. Week three, top five. He can go out and win you weeks. Doesn't cost any of the capital. He helped uh, us beat Lamar yep. in the expert division of League One. So you know it's it's like uh, it's like you're going into a fight and you've got the ability to just make a real cheap Molotov cocktail. That's going to be a good weapon a lot of times, unless it goes off in so your sometimes face. Sometimes you drop some, it on some, the ground. Sometimes accidents happen. <laughs> and then, so that's he's a Molotov. So cocktail. he's a Molotov cocktail. That's what it's it's not bad. It's not the most precise weapon. No, but if you get it where it needs to be, oh, fire, very effective. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Number six. Oh, excellent. Josh Allen. Hey, Josh. I take it personally, all the success that Josh Allen has in the NFL. Like, I'm rooting for him to have success. I loved him coming out of college. Number six in finish. Number four in consistency. What? He That's right, Mike. The fourth most consistent quarterback. He only busted twice and so when you look at the consistency <laughs> score he was extraordinarily consistent but what he was consistent lacking, like a, like 
quarterback 73, 12. 73 percent good yes. games, my friend. The seventy three percent good games, but the problem is thirteen percent great games. He was not a weak winner. He's not the type of fantasy asset that I wanted most weeks. I would rather roll with a guy like Jameis, who was less consistent, but his ceiling was so much higher. I mean, you just didn't see other outside of week eleven. You didn't see Josh Allen have. I feel like he's the best quarterback for Christian McCaffrey owners on the earth. Sure, that would be. He's just perfect. not going to ruin your week. You know, going forward, he's got a rushing baseline. A lot of times, those rushing quarterbacks have a really high floor. Their consistency comes a little bit easier because in games where they can't throw the ball, they can make it up with their legs. That was Josh Allen. But this is just—it's a team that is not going to score a lot of points. They've got a good defense, and they don't want to be one of those I outscore you teams with McDermott. So I, I you know, I think it's more of the same next year. I don't think we're waiting for him to level up and be good enough for them to score more points. I don't think that's what the Bills want. Uh, this is a team that I could see A.J. Green landing on pretty easily as well. I think they'll try to go get a bigger-bodied receiver w weapon. You know, we had our, what, blink and you missed it, Antonio Brown's a Buffalo Bill last year for a split second. Right. You know, John Brown was very much this same story at the wide receiver position where he just never really gave you big weeks, but he was just hanging around that, oh, I'm a wide receiver 15, I'm a wide receiver 14, I'm I'm not hurting you, but I'm not. And it was kind of surprising because Allen ended last season with some monster games. Because he was running. Because he, he was, was running so His much. rushing yards dropped from 52 a game down to 31. And 31 rushing yards a game, that's that's nice. I mean, that's that's a good – little uh, extra step in the fantasy score, but that's not enough to really make a difference. Yeah, and now you have a situation with, uh, you know, he, he made progress as a passer. Nine interceptions. You know, you talk about discipline at the position. Nine interceptions, four fumbles lost, ran for five more than 500 yards at the quarterback position, limited weapons on offense. You know, if it's Devin Singletary, John Brown and company, they bring somebody else in, I am... I would expect more of the same from Josh Allen. I think Jason's right about that. I think Allen's a top ten quarterback next next year, and yeah. he was drafted at quarterback twenty one. Yeah, he he might be, but you know this remind this season reminds me of several years in a row of Philip Rivers, where because he was so consistently meh, he finished high because he didn't really bust, but he didn't win you fantasy weeks. You look at the first, you know, the first nine weeks of the season. The first nine weeks of the season, he was the quarterback on points per game, quarterback 11. That sounds great. Except right. he was only a quarterback one twice in those nine weeks. That's not that's not going to win you weeks. That's not how you get to the playoffs and how you get to a championship game. Uh, I want a higher ceiling than just a consistently middle-of-the-pack fantasy finish. He mm. was consistent at it, but I don't want I don't want my quarterback to finish outside the top 12 – any given week and the majority of the time he did I just like that he's young I like that he made progress as a passer and I like that there's opportunity for weapons there you guys agree with me is that a destination you could see AJ Green landing I, th in? I think they will add somebody whether it's they take a shot for Green or they draft someone in the top three rounds yeah I think they'll draft a, a really high prospect all right I'm gonna put a pin in it at the quarterback position we'll come back on Thursday we'll talk Brady and Kyler and Matt Ryan and Patrick Mahomes Aaron Rodgers so many other big names at the quarterback position. Jeff Driscoll. Tell you what the truth is. Oh, I you can't make me talk Driscoll. Mm, I can talk. I've got a plan. One more big score. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thanks again for supporting the show. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back, like I said, on Thursday. Make sure you tune in to Thursday's episode because that's where I will once again reveal how to make the dip. Oh, for the big game. Tune in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.